Bob, it's been very interesting. Well, sorry. Uh, right, we are brain bind. And basically this year has been very difficult, I think for everyone. And we've been essentially doing everything through our computers. I can't even imagine what it's like for people who lack fine motor control and who lack the ability to easily access the features of their computers. So our motivation was to create a simple and importantly, a flexible solution, which would allow the, these people to access the common used applications, any common used application that they may want to. So basically the solution, our concept is to use either SSVP or motor imagery. And I assume that everyone in this uh, audience knows what I'm referring to, those terms. And it will use those two paradigms to control any consumable application on a computer, which has pre-built key bindings or keyboard shortcuts. So on the right, you can see uh, an example wireframe of an application, which we would have liked to have made, but did not have the time. And this is implemented using SSVP. So the bottom right-hand corner would be flashing at a particular frequency, for example, 12 Hertz, and that would control the move command. And the bottom left-hand corner would be flashing at, for example, 18 Hertz, and that would be controlling the select command. So you have basically access to two commands, which we can map to anything. So in, the, in our application, initially, they would be mapped to move and select. So this would allow the user to move through a selection of applications. And then in this case, the user would select Zoom. It would take them to the next screen and they would then be able to choose any action which Zoom has pre-built, which has a key binding in Zoom. So uh, for example, to mute or unmute or share their screen. We've prepared some demos for applications which we think might be useful. For example, scrolling through a PDF, reading a book or looking at a hackathon presentation, uh, somebody with, who lacks fine motor control might find this incredibly useful. Another potential application, as we've seen, is to mute or unmute oneself using Zoom um, in a completely hands-free way. And here we're demonstrating how our system can map any combination of keys on the keyboard to any one of these two commands that we are to link any of the two commands generating generated using the brain computer interface to any key combination. So for example, here we've mapped it to LTA. Another very interesting application I think would be to allow somebody to explore essentially the whole world using Google Maps Street View and all they would need is to bind these two BCI commands to the right arrow key and to the up arrow key. And this would essentially allow them to navigate anywhere which that they would want to. All right, so in the last 24 hours, we weren't able to build the entire application, but what we were able to build is a brain computer interface using motor imagery and a very simple command line user interface. And you can use the command line user interface to program your key combinations and to map it to either command one, which for example, in motor imagery would be the left hemisphere being active uh, or command two, which would be the right hemisphere being active. In order to do this, we needed to train a classifier. So this entailed us recording data and here you can see us recording data. We set up a paradigm which uh, allowed, in this case, Bertram told him when to move his left hand or imagine moving his left hand or his right hand and captured those cues as well as the EEG data. We then processed this using a bandpass filter and a notch filter as is the norm. And then use spatial filtering as a feature extraction technique. We then used linear discriminant analysis as a classifier and achieved respectable results, I think, for the given amount of time. Once our classifier, our classifier was trained, uh, this then allowed us to do real-time processing. So our online pipeline looked something like this. 
First, we connected the unicorn over the lab streaming layer. We then loaded our classifier. And this then allowed us to continuously read, pre-process, and classify our motor imagery data, and then output a specific key binding, which the user had uh, requested beforehand. So the outcomes, this is what we think that we've achieved, is creating a, a usable, although not user-friendly, uh, interface using Python that we confirmed can control any common application using key bindings. We also created a full BCI pipeline for processing and classification. And we confirmed that our logic was sound by running all of these algorithms on the Graz data set, with which we achieved approximately 94% accuracy. And we also set up two experimental paradigms. Like I mentioned at the beginning, we plan to use either SSVP or motor imagery. And we would have liked to have compared the two to see which, which worked better, which was more robust. Unfortunately, we did not have the time to analyze the recorded SSVP data. Um, on the recorded MI data, we achieved approximately 60% classification accuracy. Like I said, not fantastic, but I think that given more time we, and more data, we could have improved. We could have created a more user-friendly application. We could have improved all of our pre-processing and eventually compared SSVP and motor imagery. Here's our team working on chasing the unicorn. It was a lot of fun and thanks to GTEC for the opportunity. I think we learned a lot to the experience and I think that this was a really interesting idea given the technology that we have accessible to us today. I think that it could help people now. Uh, thank you very much.